Welcome. We're uh, excited that we're getting ready to do a brand new series, and this series is called The Christian Wardrobe. So we have had fun uh, just uh, learning from the Lord and experiencing the good things that He has, and we're, we're blessed that you've allowed us to come and be a part of your home and, and just learn together. Um, you know, groups are something that really are the heart and soul of our church. It's the, it's the place that uh, discipleship and love and encouragement happens. I know there's wonderful prayer that happens and God does great. We hear reports all the time of the good things that God's doing in just the individual groups. So it really does encourage us to hear that. Yeah, it is. Thanks for letting us come into your home or wherever you're watching. You know, when you think of a Christian wardrobe, we've been around long enough to where churches were pretty strict on what Christians were allowed to wear in church. I mean, there was a time uh, Pastor Kim would never come to church in a pair of jeans or a pair of pants. Because, or without stockings. Or without heels. stockings, heels. Uh, I don't know, you never had your hair up in a bun. but No, some, not quite. Some, uh, church, and, and I had to have a tie on. And when you think of Christian wardrobe, what's appropriate to dress to come to worship God? And we were under the, the obligation of some rigid rules of what, we even had friends that she couldn't wear pants in their denomination at home and so to get the mail, she would crawl underneath the window that people might see her in pants to go out the door to reach up into the mailbox. And you wonder what's wrong with pastors. What's wrong with pastors? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's uh, so when we talk about the, the, the Christian's wardrobe, uh, we're, we're not going to, you can be relieved. We're not going to tell you what uh, what kind of clothes you're supposed <laughs> we to wear. We don't have a standard. We don't have a standard other than uh, the Lord. wear something. Yes. Uh, but we, we have a come as you are kind of motto. But in the scriptures, God has a wardrobe mm. for us to wear. And if you don't know what's available and you don't know how to, to apply it and, and appropriate that wardrobe, you're going to miss uh, many things that God uh, has for you. So I want us to kind of anchor to get started in the in the, the, the prophet Isaiah chapter 61. We're going to kind of bounce in and out of this chapter some through some of the talks. It's a powerful chapter. It's where you find Jesus quotes from in the gospel of Luke when he begins his ministry. He quotes the first couple of verses as kind of defining what his ministry would be of, of the gospel and restoration, open the eyes of the blind and preach the poor. But a little later in the in this redemption that he brings, there's a there's a great verse, and and why don't you read to us Isaiah sixty one verse ten. I delight greatly in the Lord; my soul rejoices in my God, for He has clothed me with garments of salvation, and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the soul makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all the nations. You know, I, I just, I can't express how gripped I am. We are with this phrase, he's rejoicing because God has provided a wardrobe. And, and there's a back story to this garments mm -hmm. of salvation, to these robes of righteousness. And I want us to kind of go, because it doesn't mean near as much if you, if you don't see it both looking forward to the, what Christ brings us, the New Testament, but first we have to look backwards to what is this concept of, Garments of salvation, where does it come from? So if you want to look with us to the book of Genesis, which you always want to, it's the book of, of new beginnings or, or beginnings. And when you find things in Genesis, kind of the first mention, some call it the law of first mention, it, it gives you an, uh, an understanding of how this is going to be seen through the rest of the Bible. So, you you know, we know the story of God created the heavens and the earth and he created man and woman and, and kind of, it, it, it closes the story out in, in chapter two. Let's just kind of anchor the ending of the 
wonder of creation with uh, the creation of Adam and Eve and what they began to do in the garden. What is that verse? Uh, what's that? One, uh, uh, one, what is that? I can't 224. read 224. Or 224, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. All right. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Now, in chapter 3. Now, we'll, we'll just stop there for a second. You know, just the concept of naked, not ashamed. What is that? What do you, what do you think of when you think of, you know, that there, there's, they didn't know what nakedness was. No. They didn't know. We'll find that out in a little bit. They didn't even know what the word naked meant. Mm -mm. No. So what, what were they not ashamed of? Do you, what, they, they weren't ashamed of their body. Yeah, I think, you know, today, obviously, if we, we walk around the streets unclothed or unrobed, you know, there, there's hopefully going to be some shame. And uh, The world's lost most of that. Well, you know, yeah. The modesty is kind of a, a lost that concept. Is, that we are in a different culture. different culture here. But um, I, I think for them, I, I can see them. Um, I, I see them as they were naked, but I see them as almost like a light or a mist around them. That there was something a, was there was something upon them, but that you know you could see the body, but it wasn't like the focus on the body. But the, so there was just no shame. There was just a they had met each other. There was a beauty. There was an acceptance. There was a, no criticalness of anything. So and no, God some just was with them. Talk about being able to see people's auras and. Things that you know, and we're electronic beings physically. We're also spiritual beings, and so there's a there's a, a, a transparency to in their spirits. Maybe we're the glory of God, the presence. We don't know, but they weren't wearing something over them right. uh, that was a, of a physical nature, material nature. But there was something. Doesn't mean they couldn't see each other completely, but they saw each other with a, 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 a glory, if you will, mm -hmm. of God's presence. Well, now Satan enters the picture in chapter 3. He comes in the garden, and, and hopefully you're familiar with the story, and he deceives them. They, they eat the fruit. They disobey God. He had told them not to do it. He told them they would die uh, if they ate the fruit, and, and which had to do with their relationship with him as well as their physical mortality and so they 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 disobey God the woman and the man they violate God's uh, thing and the first result of that uh, let's pick up the story and just get the feel they went from this this joy of being intimate with each other and there was no shame to now down here uh, what, are, what are we at uh, are we going to uh, start in chapter three yeah let's go to okay. uh, give us uh, let's do first three one. eight maybe eight nine to start eights here mm-hmm then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Let's just stop for a second there. We'll come back. But I love, uh, and uh, we've talked about it before, but when I think of the, this is not an abnormal thing for the Lord to come hang out with his kids. Mm. This, this is normal. And they, they heard him. I've always had the theory, the idea that he was whistling or humming <laughs> or singing because he's a joyful father. Of course, yes. He, he's happy. He's uh, uh, Reminds the, me of that song, Whistle While You Work. Whistle While You Work. Or, <laughs> or I always envision him singing uh, the Zippity Doodah yes, song. Yes. Zippity A, my oh my, what a wonderful day. I mean, I just see, you got to keep. Yeah, he wasn't like, where's my yeah, kids? Like you the know? big. It was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They hear God coming. It's like Godzilla, you know, big giant footsteps in the garden. No, this is the Father. This is the Creator coming to share why He made Adam and Eve is to be able to share have, the joy of being together. Yeah. But on their end, they do something they've never done before. They hide from God. Now, you know, let's re read that again. We're just they hid, and what do they do? Why? And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Go ahead. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Like God didn't know 
what had happened. You got to assume questions are for their benefit, not for God's mm -hmm. benefit. Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And again, God knows the answer. Right. But he knows there's the beginning of healing is in honesty. Mm -hmm. The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. You know, you just see so many things. You know, they're hiding the, the, the fig leaf. You know, they, they, they cover themselves with some kind of fig leaves which is kind of the beginning. I see that as the beginning of religion, mm. their self-made religion. Uh, you know, something's not right. I'll fix it with a superficial Band-Aid. And they, they cover over. They hide from God. They're afraid. They're shame. They're covering themselves with a, uh, these fig leaves. And God is drawing them out for healing. He's not coming as a police officer. He's coming as a as a father to expose expose them. Why, why would he want to expose them? What's he looking for? Well, truth. He's looking for truth because truth leads to healing. Yes. He's not just trying to get them to admit they're guilty, but he can't heal something. Until they know. Until they know. Mm -hmm. And they bring it to him. And so we, we begin this journey of, of God could have stopped them from the tree. He didn't. They go to the tree. They eat the fruit. They blame each other. Adam blames Eve. Eve blames the well, devil. Well, it says here, then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman says to the serpent, uh, the, the woman says, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock. So there's this blaming. But the reality is now they're standing in a place they've never been. They're afraid of God. They're, they're, they got shame. They, 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 they realize that there's an, an embarrassment of their bodies uh, to each other. And they, that shame is, is they're, they're not looking forward to being in his presence yeah, any they longer. They, they, no they, longer yeah. is that a, a joy for them to, you know, they, they must have had countless days of just beautiful times in the garden with, yeah. with the Lord and just uh, dancing and singing and exploring and just, but, but the shame that was on them, they could no longer enjoy his presence. So you know that had to break his heart. Oh, this is the um, beginning that of he made He though. made them for that very purpose. He loved them. He enjoyed them. He desired, you know, to come in the cool of the day and be with his kids. Nothing keeps more people away from church than shame. They're afraid to come because their fig leaves may get exposed. And and they have the concept that churches are after trying to embarrass or, or condemn or, or judge people when the reality is it's like the father here. He's on a mission to restore his children and they've sinned and there is guilt and you can act like, well, there isn't. Let's pretend that they're, but they, they, they know that there's something between them now that there's never been. Mm. Now there's a, there, there, there's a, a withdrawnness there. This isn't just being naked physically. They feel naked emotionally. They're naked uh, spiritually. They're, 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 they're vulnerable. They're, they're in a, a place of, of, of fear. And so in the middle of this, God could have just said, that's it. You guys have been stupid. I'm going to let you lay in your, your bad choices. But he initiates the plan of redemption. He gives the woman a promise in verse 15 that her mm -hmm. seed would crush the, the enemy's head. And then God does something amazing. And let's, I, I want to jump ahead at the end of, uh, let's read uh, 20 and 21 there uh, for us. Uh, chapter 3, 20, 21. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and he clothed them. And that's just, this is, this is the beginning. This is the first gospel sermon in the Bible. The, the first promise is, is 315 about the seed crushing. But this is God beginning the plan of redemption. When we talk about it at the beginning of these garments of salvation, this is the beginning of those garments. 
Why were they needed? Because Adam and Eve had sinned and broken their intimacy with God and their intimacy with each other. And now there's a need for a remedy. Yeah, even, even if God wanted to uh, have fellowship with them, he could not. Couldn't. He Why? Couldn't. Why couldn't he have? Because, because he was holy and righteous and pure, and he cannot be with us or them in, in an impure state. Because it would it would blow us going, away. Doesn't he love them enough? Can't he just love them enough? It to isn't about them? love. He did love them, or um, or he wouldn't have provided a remedy. But he he could not embrace them and be close to them because God can't have sin in His presence. He's not going to. Um, we, we've kind of lost that understanding. Yes. That yes, God is more loving than mm -hmm. anything in the, the universe. He's the source of all love but he's also a holy and a just God. And that justice has a, he's light and in him is no darkness. And so for him to have intimacy and relationship with sinful creatures, there has to be a solution. And it required clothing. It required the Christian's wardrobe, the garments of salvation. These garments, where do they come from? Does God go get them? At the at the religious store down the street, where how does he how does he get the garments? What does he do? Well, he he prepares them. He prepares. He had to he had to kill something. Yeah. And it's the first. We're going to unpack this more in the next talk, but I want you to just start with the fact that it, this is not Adam and Eve solving their own problems. This isn't fig leaves. They've got to go. It's not masking. This is God saying. I'm going to start over with you. I'm going to give you forgiveness. I'm going to, this isn't God throwing a, a blanket over Adam and Eve and pretending nothing happened. Something has to die. An innocent animal, God with his own hands, as we were talking, probably the Lord Jesus himself, as, as pre-incarnate, before he became in a human body, there was appearances of Christ. We think this probably was Jesus. He's sacrificing an animal, knowing that that animal is doing everything that's going to happen to him in a couple thousand years. It was a prophetic experience or picture. Yes. We, we talk about prophetic visions, but this was actually a prophetic uh, experience that was happening that meant as much as the father was preparing the lamb. Mm. Um, I think it was a baby lamb, but, you know, I, I just think it was the, the innocence, the purity, the representation of who Christ was. And so as he's preparing this, you, you could see him doing this on some, he goes back into the garden without them. They can't come. So he's got maybe some rock well, table. Well, they're not out yet. Yeah. So they, they obviously could have heard the screams. Or maybe even they witnessed they could, it. Could they have been witnessing it? Yeah, they could have witnessed I've, I've often the, wondered. You know, they love the animals. Mm -hmm. The animals were friends, and Adam named them. And these were, this was, creation was in perfect harmony. And, you know, I don't know how they communicated. Uh, not saying animals talk. You know, maybe then, they did you know. witness it. When you think about it, we, ha we have to witness, uh, you know, the cross and look upon what happened to Christ in order to find our healing. And it may have very well been something that they needed to fully understand. I think until you appreciate the price of the garments, you're not going to appreciate the benefit of the garments, that these garments are garments of salvation. They're not just a outward covering. They're powerfully significant as symbols of God's forgiveness and his restoration. And so when you think of him covering us in salvation, that each one of us, when we come to Jesus and we see our vulnerability, our nakedness, our sinfulness, our guilt, our shame. It, it, I remember from my life and I, I, I couldn't imagine God could love someone like me when I started seeing who me really was. And he pulled back the curtains and and you first think, well, I got to pretend I didn't do that or or blame somebody else, or put fig leaves on. And the reality is there's nothing we can hide from God. Right. And he still loved them, but he had to provide a solution 
which were the garments of salvation. And he does that in Christ. In this series, we're going to learn how these garments define us, identify us, empower us. It, it, it's, 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 it, they're supernatural. This garment, we'll learn in our next talk, was a supernatural garment that God, uh, God made. But let's just start with this, that we have a wardrobe. We have something that we can choose to receive from God mm. that covers the worst, the most evil, foulness of our life. Isn't that amazing? It, it's freedom. It is freedom. Without yes. it, you'll never be free in his presence. Yes. You won't worship in freedom. Yeah. You won't come and pray in freedom. Our human nature is to take the vileness of our life and past, and, and as you've been talking, this, this whole message of covering and hiding and pretending and, and the very thing that God's wanting to do is have provision so that you can come and bring those things so he can shed light. And sometimes that hurts. I know when I first got saved and I first started coming to the Lord and started realizing my own nakedness spiritually was just um, Well, the atrocious. enemy focuses on it. Yeah. He yeah. uses it against, he, he, he baited them to sin and then uses it against them right with God God wouldn't love you how could God love you how could God you, you but don't but, like but I remember God had to allow me to see the ugliness and the yeah. the awfulness of who who I was without him. without him because if I did not if the light of his presence had not shown me those things I would not have if I hadn't have had some guilt like Adam right. and Eve did I would not have said um, please, I want your love, your mercy, your light. But the guilt, you have to go the right direction. Guilt can, shame can drive you from the Lord, but a healthy guilt can bring us to the Lord, to the light. Mm -hmm. So we want to and just celebrate these garments of mm -hmm. salvation as we go through this series together and, and learn the power of standing and what God has provided uh, for each of you. So let's uh, close in prayer and just welcome the Lord uh, on this series. Go ahead, honey, you uh, lead us in prayer. You know, maybe while you're you're there in your groups, you might want to let the Holy Spirit just kind of show you, where, are there some places that you're hiding? Uh, are, are there some places of shame that have kept you from fully coming into the Lord's presence? Uh, these should be liberating scriptures to be able to understand the heart of God that it's about redemption and it's about love and that you don't have to pretend. God already knows mm. everything about our heart yes. and he just wants you to trust him and his love. Mm. So let's thank pray. You, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word that teaches us and uh, shows us and guides us into the truth of who you really are, uh, what your heart is all about. We thank you, Father, that uh, you didn't give a Band-Aid to us or, or even cast off Adam and Eve permanently, but you gave uh, redemption and life you, and covered with your righteousness. And Father, because of that, uh, mankind continued. And because of that, we're all sitting in our, our living rooms today because of uh, your great grace. So Father, I pray that uh, your love would wash over those that need it, that if there are those there uh, maybe a young person, maybe a teenager, an adult that, that has never given their, their heart or their shame to the Lord Jesus, that they will this night, this day, just say, yes, Lord, and uh, please wash me, please cover me. Uh, I need your covering. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.